not to chase your own tail. All right, let's get back to this opening gap reversal. Now, before we get into that, a little, I want to talk a few words about, or talk a little bit about burning dogs. And that comes from, I don't know if I could reach it, Trading Sardines, which was Linda Rasky's book. Really enjoyed reading that book. Um, I actually helped Linda in the editing. I think my name is in there somewhere for helping. But uh, excellent book. And it, it's a very honest book when it comes to like trading. And, uh, you know, a lot of F-bombs in there. But she was talking about this one trader would come in and he would just do the opposite of whatever the S&P was doing. And, and she... And uh, he, he said something about don't pet the burning dog or whatever. Like he would, it, he liked to just be the uh, be contrary and just to be contrary is, is the gist of it. In fact, I probably should go and read it to make sure I got the stories right. But it sounded like he wanted to be contrary and just to be contrary because nobody wants to pet the burning dog. And how that came about, I don't know. But I started calling these ogres that are against the trend. So you've got a trend straight down. And then you got a gap down and then it comes back up. I started calling those burning dogs. And uh, by the way, Linda had told him, look, just stop being so contrarian for the contrarian sake. And why don't we model it out and let's see if there's a bit of an edge there. So ideally with these burning, with these ogres, I should say, these opening gap reversals, you want to trade in the direction of the trend. So you've got a nice trend, you got a pullback, and then all of a sudden you got a gap down. You're looking to catch it reversion back up in the direction of the trend, as opposed to a pure reversion to the mean move from a market that's stretched. However, there are cases where you might go in something like Bitcoin, an index, or a sector ETF and trade those burning dog type of setups. Ideally though, I like to see the ogre, the opening gap reversal in the direction of the trend and ideally within a setup like a pullback. Now, somebody brought up AMAT this morning. We'll take a look at that. And I would say as a general statement, you want to avoid burning dogs. And it, burning dogs don't make a lot of sense when I show the pattern here. Unless it's something like a super big cap stock. And my thinking was, and we were talking about this on Facebook earlier, and uh, they watched it, didn't trade, which I think I'm actually more impressed that they watched it, didn't trade, than if they had just ran out and traded it. But you could see AMAT this morning had the mother of all gaps lower and then pretty much went straight up, had a route higher. Now, in a case like AMAT, if you take a look at the SOX, which we'll do in a few minutes, and the big cap stocks within the SOX, but specifically the SOX and the overall market, AMAT is such a big fat stock. It traded 14 million shares today that maybe I can make an exception for something like that, but ideally you want to trade the actual sector. And the reason I'm making an exception is because it's so thick and so big, it kind of acts like the sector itself. And, you know, maybe I'm kind of backing into something here. Maybe you could use something like AMAT to kind of help you time your uh, semiconductor trade. So as goes AMAT, so does the semis, I would imagine. But yeah, this one did work out nicely. Um, as a general statement, you don't want to be trading against the trend. You don't want to be fighting the trend unless you know you come in like today, S and P just gets washed out, and then it wasn't that easy. I took a couple of stabs at futures that did not make money in futures today, believe it or not. But I was able to make money in the ETFs and then pick up a tiny bit in SVXY, a tiny bit in TQQQ and stuff like that. By the way. This is another thing I was talking about last week at Bandcamp with the other guys. It seems to me, and because he was he was trading, one guy in particular was trading the ETFs versus the futures. And it seems to me that it's a little bit easier to hold on to the ETFs. Now, it might be the leverage involved or whatever. But a market like the S&P futures is so damn choppy. I've been backing way off on my futures trading lately. And then, you know, just going and doing like onesies every now and then just for shits and giggles. But anyway, if you go to trade an ogre, maybe I'll make an exception for something like AMAT. You know, you can see there's a couple in here, major, major lows, little ogre back here. I'm just kind of eyeballing them. You know, this one, who knows what happened. You better got chopped up a little bit in that. But, you know, here's one that failed, okay? So they don't always work, but ideally you want them 
in the direction of the trend. By that, let's say this was a longer term trend, just use your mind's eye, imagine that. And then let's say you gap to, down to here, you got a major trend, you got a pullback, and then it begins to reverse. That's a much better trend. Is it in the morning? No, it's uh, 6.30 Central Time, 6.42 Central Time here. So here's the Beto. Now, Beto hit an all-time low. Now, keep in mind, this is a futures contract based on the S, the Bitcoin. And this is actually a third derivative because this is a derivative of a derivative. And I don't know if Bitcoin's a derivative or not. I guess it's not. But you can see it makes all-time lows. Now, obviously, it's not all-time lows for Bitcoin, but it's all-time lows for this contract. And for the futures contract, I suppose. But by the way, I don't recommend you hold Beto overnight. If you're going to hold something, GBTC would be my go-to for that. I do have a, a hot old position there. Don't tell anybody because uh, it kind of goes against <laughs> what I believe in. But I do have a tiny bit of that hot one. I do have some uh, Bitcoin on the hardware wallet. Not enough to beat me over the head with, believe me. <laughs> what they call that, the $5 wrench? Uh, just a little tiny, tiny bit just for S&Gs. So it, made, it makes all-time lows the contract at least. So it looks kind of like a washout. And my thinking is kind of Greg Snow-esque is S, if that's the right way of saying that, but kind of like along the lines of what Greg Snell is saying, two markets are correlated. And I have noticed even before Greg pointed that out, as you'll go back, if you go back and look at prior presentations where I had the, like I did earlier with one under the other, that's, Sometimes when the market begins to reverse, sometimes you can go in and trade something like Beto, and it might actually be a little cleaner, and you might actually be able to risk less. And, and in this Beto trade, I risked, I was going to risk 20, 10 cents initially, and I said, you know what, let me uh, widen that out to a full 20 cents. And this is what it looked like on a daily chart. Those are the trades up there. Don't worry about grabbing the screen. I'll come back to that in one second. But I just put on a thousand shares, not a whole lot, at this level here, 1137, and I'll walk you through the trade. I flipped out my initial risk, like I said, I only wanted to risk 10 cents. And there's a danger in that, like, okay, 10 cents, thousand shares, 100 bucks, you know, who cares, right? But there's a danger in that, and like trading not to lose. So it's like, okay, well, I really thought I could go in and risk 10 cents on this. Once I got into it, and I put that trailing stop at 10 cents. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. you got to give this thing at least twice that amount, 20 cents. Now, for taking profits, and this is where you got to be careful too. It's like, well, if I take profits at 20 cents, I'm only making 100 bucks. It's like, well, hang on, Dave. Do you think you can go further than 20 cents? It's like, yeah, I think it can go at least 30 cents higher. And that's why I put in my IPT 30 cents higher. So I took profits when that happened, partial profits, and then let the stop ride. Now, as I said earlier, I put in, I guess, four if you count the close. So I put in an entry order, and once that triggered, I put in a trailing stop, an IPT, and then once the IPT was hit, I tried to close my eyes and not look at it too much. And then at the end of the day, I just replaced that trailing stop order with a market on close. So we'll take a look at that. So again, as I was asked earlier, I deleted the question, I forget who asked it, uh, but they were asking about, about your focus, and, and, and I think they were talking more along the lines of what if two different things are happening at the same time, how do you pick one? But as far as the, the intraday stuff, I don't want to watch a screen all day. When I start watching that screen, I can feel it right now. My shoulder starts to clench up a little bit. You know, now my fingers are going numb, so just kind of a hot mess. So I don't want to push you guys into day trading unless, of course, it's a money lying in the corner situation. And believe me, I'm working on that. But in this case, all I did was I put in a stop entry order and I put in an IPT for 30 cents higher, 20 cents trailing stop. Because look, we enter at, let's say we get in here around round numbers around 40 cents, you know, drop it down 20 cents, we're way back here. So this market should not turn around and go and, and go all the way back in. 
So flipped out half at 30 cents. Now I usually have one for one on this. So if I'm risking half a point, flip it out at half a point, trail it at a half a point. Now sometimes on that second loaf, especially if the market really starts moving in my favor, I'll open that up a little bit more, kind of like we do in those longer term swing trades. I know I've beaten a horse on the ARLP, which I la which is a last long that triggered in 2021, early 2021, recommended in 2020, triggered in 2021. And we're still holding on because we've got that widening stop in there. So by all means, be willing to widen that stop out a little bit, that trailing stop, open it up a little bit and to see what happens. But anyway, flipped out half there. And then I did 500 market on close. So again, there's the trades down there. And this one's a little bit better than that VIX trade, 150 bucks on the first loaf, 174 in a second for a gain of 324. Which is better than the polka If you could, if you could do that every day, and I know my wife makes fun of me when I do this annualization thing. That's over seventy five thousand dollars extra a year if you could go and find this money line in the corner type of trade. Which I wouldn't, I wouldn't say this is the best trade in the world, but I figured it was worth a shot. The money line in the corner, I think, would be more like a we're in a longer term bull market and a company is pulling back or making like a TKO, and then. They come out with bad earnings or ideally something that's that's not so tangible, some kind of bad news, and then that, that stop gaps lower on that news. And then people by the end of the day or, or early in the trading, it becomes a bit of a shoulder shrug and everybody rushes back in to the trade. But anyway, this is what I did here. And it, it was a fairly low risk trade and it turned out okay for me. Okay. Jeff says, how do you set your buy points on ogres? Like Beto, when it does not gap, drop, then come back up. See Riot today. Okay, remind me when we get to the live charts, we'll take a look at Riot. You know, and that's a good idea. It's something I didn't think about doing was there was so much to look at today. I didn't think about looking at the Crypto Sisters to see what they were doing. That's that's pretty smart, Jeff. I'm impressed. And that's why I need to probably need to pay more attention to uh, to Facebook, although I was in there quite a bit today in my Facebook group. Um, well, one thing I would encourage you to do, and let's back this chart up a little bit, is let me just take all this writing out of here. If you're looking at the little, remember I talked about the one minute warning earlier. If you're looking at the chart intraday, you got to be really careful not to, you got to be careful to see the forest for the trees, okay? Because you're up like this. And and that little one minute move or even a 15 minute move is going to look like it's this huge bar, okay? And sometimes I make the mistake of zooming in too far, and then the bar is not only this big, but it's that big, and it looks like the market's going to the moon. Well, one thing I do on one monitor, I keep all the ETFs on a daily basis, and if I get all hot and bothered looking at them over here in a trading station, I'll come over here where I am now. And this is the computer I do all my analysis on. And I'll look at the, those ETFs on an intraday basis. And if I'm doing something in individual stock, I'll look at that too. And I'm sorry, on a daily basis, I keep daily charts up. So I look at the daily chart so to make sure I'm not chasing my own tail because early in the morning, this thing rallies up to 20 cents or 30 cents or whatever. And it's looking like it's just going to the moon, but then it starts backing and filling. Okay, aha, I almost got caught in the breakout, uh, fake out there. So you need to make sure you're looking at the daily chart. And I don't have an exact entry point on these ogres. And yeah, sometimes you can go in, it's right on the open, it's the best time to trade them. But I like to let them get moving a little bit. And my favorite ogres, and if you go in and watch as many weekend charts as you can stand, you'll see that they show up every now and then, every so often, back during the bull market days. But you got a stock that gaps open, rallies up a little bit, implodes, and then you're like, aha. I got you, okay? And that's where I think it was how someone earlier is like, how do you focus? Well, my focus is I put my entry right above that high or right you know, right, right below that high of the day. And a lot of times I'll never get triggered. The stock would just keep it imploding, but I don't care, I keep on imploding. Now, maybe if the base is out late in the day, two o'clock or an hour before the close for uh, three o'clock Eastern, two o'clock my time, maybe late in the day, you get this late day rallies, maybe I'll, I'll play that late day breakout and then stop out at the low of the day, okay? So you see what I mean about ogres? It's like 
there's so many questions, but go in and watch those. Uh, you, you have access to the back end. So go in and watch the Q&A, all the Q&A we did on Ogres, and then, of course, the YouTube channel after that. Okay, how do you buy, buy points on ogres like Beto when it does not gap, drop, and then come back up? See Riot today. The black one seems obvious and Riot, but not Beto. Well, okay, opening gap, uh, that's kind of like a la Toby Crable, okay? So it's like, okay, well, we got an opening gap. It's rallying, it's rallying, it's rallying. I'm going to jump in, right? And this thing might just fake out. And then all of a sudden I saw this move here, like, okay, I feel a little bit better now. And then I saw it breaking out. And I don't know exactly when I placed the order, but it probably was, it was well before 11 o'clock. I placed the order uh, up here somewhere, give it some wiggle room. And when I saw it implode, I'm like, okay, what's well, probably not going to trigger. So I went about my life. And later in the day, I heard zing. And then later in the day, I heard another zing when it hit that IPT. So hopefully that makes some sense. When it does not gap drop and then come back up. Yeah, that's the ideal. Gap drop then comes up but not Beto, okay. Well, we'll take a look at Riot. So he says it looks a lot more obvious in Riot. So Toby Crable did an opening gap, uh, opening rage breakout book years ago. It's a it's, um, very rare book. It's like three or $4,000, um, but you might be able to find it out there somewhere or the gist of it. But the gist of it is he looked to play these opening breakouts of these ranges and some of the ogre stuff is similar to that. So you know, just wait to see if you get a little bit of a base, wait to see if you get a couple of fake outs and then put your entry in above those highs. And then every now and then, guess what? You're gonna buy the absolute freaking high of the market. It, spell it a silent SH, happens. I thought Riot dropped enough through the gap, open buying, it came back up through the open price, it's fairly safe, gave you a good stop at the low. Yeah, beautiful, Jeff. All right, we're gonna look at that. That that makes a lot of sense. I think that's what I was trying to explain here. It's gonna work out great to have that. 